Hello, my name is Amina and I'm your decision-making specialist. And today I decided that I'm just going to do this randomly because I don't want to label it for tomorrow and then think, wow, I'm ahead of the game because <laughs> it doesn't really make me ahead. It means that right now, I am going to get confused, and it's already not easy to keep track of what day is what day. I actually have a little index card, and I just keep putting what the day is and what the numbers are, so I'm not going to do that. Today is just my wandering thoughts. It happens to be Mother's Day today, and I suddenly realized and my mother died when I was a little bit, just barely an eyelash over 20 years old. So I have memories of my mother. And to say that I miss my mother, I'm not sure. There are lots of things I would like to tell her. And I just say them out loud sometimes. I don't, I have no idea what happens. It just could be me listening to my own voice. Who knows? Anyway, what came to me in the midst of that was our having our toolbox and our story and our legacy as we go out there. And I was thinking that I can call it a toolbox, a story, a legacy, what makes the difference is your thumbprint on it. What makes the difference is the you that's there. So that it's not anybody else's toolbox. Maybe it sounds like the same tools. However, no one in the world, in the universe, in any universe will be using those tools those skills, those strategies, those bits of magic, nobody will be using them like you. That is really important. And your story, nobody will have the same story. Maybe it will sound like, oh, I have friends, I have family, I have my immediate family now. I was born, I was this, I was that, I am that, I am this. You know what? Those are just labels. They're headings, they're chapter names. They aren't you. In that story is the magic. That magic is you. You are the one that makes that story different than anybody else's. Your memories add the essence, the spice, the nuances, the little shifts that bring the person back to say, oh, this is your story. This is your life. This is who you are. And this is how you got to be that way. And this is how you want to show up later on. And your legacy. Everyone can say, I've got a legacy. I'm writing my legacy. I'm creating it, designing it. And what it is, the legacy is what you will leave behind that will be other people's memories of you, that you've written along the way, that they've noticed along the way, and they will remember. Only you, only your legacy, only what you will leave behind. And as I was thinking about my mom, I thought about my dad, 
and I thought about my grandmother, all three of them, incredible cooks, great bread makers. And this morning, I thought about pancakes. <laughs> I have not eaten them in so long. And I thought about the fingerprints. My mom would use all different kinds of flour. She would use whole wheat. She would use white flour. She would use bread flour. She would use buckwheat flour. She would add a little bit of cornmeal or a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And that is how she would put it together. And then she would use milk, some eggs, baking powder, sometimes some baking soda, stir it up, and that was how she did it. And she would usually let it set because she said she wanted all the little particles of flour to get moist so that she had a very smooth, creamy kind of pancake with the texture of the different kinds of flour. And she would make a homemade syrup of brown sugar, and then she would add some vanilla, and then she would add some water. And first of all, she would toast the sugar in a skillet, and she would get it just certain color of caramel. And then she would add the water slowly and let the syrup mingle with the water and stay thick enough to pour and soak into the pancake without dribbling all over. So that was my mom's recipe. My dad basic white flour, egg, milk, baking powder. That was daddy's recipe. However, what he did with that recipe was his thumbprint. He would add sliced bananas. He would add grated apple. He would add little chunks of orange. He would add bananas and raisins. He would add cook it and, or maybe stir a little bit of peanut butter in it and then spread jam after he had made the pancakes. That was his fingerprint. My grandmother's pancakes were always white flour, cornmeal, eggs, milk, and little touch of vanilla and baking powder. However, her thumbprint was how she cooked the pancakes. Well, everyone who's watching any kind of nutrition would probably not think they were the best in the world. However, I was little, and I tell you right here and now, I am salivating. First with my dad's, then with my mom's, and now with my grandmother's. She would, had a huge cast iron skillet, and she would put quite a bit more than an eyelash of grease in the pan or butter, whichever was available, depending on if the cow gave enough milk. And then in that skillet, first she would get that skillet just rip-roaring hot. And then she would add the grease and or the butter 
and when it was just barely, just a whisper, not smoking, not burnt, she would take this huge ladle and she would scoop it up and she would pour it in that cast iron skillet. She would pour a lot. I don't mean inches and feet or something like that. Just thicker. They were not crepes. They were not double crepes. They were not rotis. They were pancakes. And then she showed me, she would wait until she saw the bubbles on the top. When some of the bubbles started to break, she had this, it was just a pancake turner. I have no idea how she could scoop that under there and flip that pancake and not splatter it all over the stove. Now here was the super part about my grandmother's pancakes. Oh, they tasted good. And oh, the syrup she made or the jam was delicious. However, on the top, because the grease or the butter were so hot, there was a crisp rim around that pancake. Oh, that was yum. So all three of them, they I could just say, well, my dad made pancakes, mom did, grandma did, and then what? What is you would be thinking about all the different pancakes you had eaten, and that would be their thumbprint. That would be the thumbprint that you put on it. That would be you. That would be your story. That would be what you would leave behind if you chose to tell somebody about your family lineage of pancakes or biscuits or whatever. So as we move along with our story, carrying our toolbox with the magic in it that's ours and writing our legacy, we are carrying our thumbprint. It always has a touch, a flavor, a vision of us. And that is important. That is what makes the difference. You, you are the one that makes the difference. And as we go out into that world, I'm not even using the new normal anymore. There is nothing normal about it because it keeps shifting and changing. As we go out of our shelter, I want, if you can, please remember that you will make a difference just by being you. Even if you never make pancakes, even if you never eat them, the essence of you will go out there. And that means that when we're all together, you will be there. You will not be missing because if you are missing, we can't all be together because there's a space there and it has your name on it. Thanks for coming. Those are my thoughts today. And if you will, click that subscribe button. Let me know what your memory is of your childhood or your life and how you have loved having that fingerprint, that thumbprint, that you print on it. All right? I'll be watching for you because you are important to me. I'll have my hand out and ready. Take care. Come back. I will be here. All right. Bye for now.